Howdy, Internet folks. How you doing today? I can't tell you how many damn videos I've been screwing up left and right these days, trying to get the information accurate out there. I was reacting to some of the news still out there and trying to go over some of the procedures I keep learning about what's happening these days. Because right now, Political Science 101 and the other political sciences are having a field day regarding our process being under attack, under review, and being assaulted left and right. And it's becoming more and more like, what the fuck? Our current administration in office is refusing to give to the will of the people. There is a certain office in the federal government that has to certify that every criteria set by law, I'll say it again, set by law, in my amendment, that once the criteria has been met, the newly elected chief monkey of the United States of America would be certified and be elected into office January 20th, next year. Unfortunately, the current administration right now is fighting left and right. Trump is going insane with his family and and his administration trying to keep the power and trying to keep the ego going. Because they don't want to lose it. Not for one damn minute. Not for one damn second. So they got to throw up every damn legal loophole they've got at this point over here. How to drive people crazy and how to, how to drain your tax dollars back into a swamp again. You voted Trump in, you boys and girls out there. Because you want to change from a swamp. And now you're seeing a different swamp. And you don't like it. That's why you put Biden in there, because you saw what kind of insanity we're dealing with right now. You didn't like the transition. You didn't like the pain. You didn't like the suffering. You didn't like the people scamming your ass left and right. So you decided to get after your collective dead asses, at least most of you did in a lot of states, and tried to get stability back into the country again and put ourselves back in, in good standing, not to mention finding a way to deal with the damn disease. Meanwhile, you've got an egomaniac with his family and his followers and his and the sycophants still fighting like crazy because they don't want to lose their damn ego status and their power. Basic. Basic. We have a power structure that's under attack. We have a structure that had been working for over 260, 270 years. Wow. A long time. We've had U.S. codes. We had amendments. We have laws set up where stuff like this shouldn't happen, but it's happening left and right. It's being under attack left and right. I was trying to explain something about democracy, how it works, how people are, are complaining about democracy, how easily corruptible it is, and I got into a tirade and I lost myself in a damn thing. The basic gist of it is democracy isn't the best form of government, but it is an effective form of government. What's even a worse effective government is having one party, one role, one ring that governs your ass. You obey or else. Welcome to authoritative. Welcome to aristocracy when the heirs to the throne are going to have the power and you're not, you commoners. We're going to have a Mussolini situation, possibly. People are supposed to love the hero. They're supposed to be loving that, that guy. Otherwise, they're going to be considered traitors, fascists, and off the heads. Hey, don't you know we're establishing certain medieval torture vector, uh, devices at this point? And we're going to put you on public display and, uh, and show you to the world that if you don't obey us, we will do something nasty to you. Ha, ha, ha. You know what terrifies the hell out of me is if we actually go back into the Dark Ages once more, or to a medieval stage, where democracy dies, aristocracy lives, and we're back to feudalism all over again. That's what scares the hell out of me. I mean, guys, you can Google all this damn shit. People were afraid of communism and socialism, what was going to be in the country, that, oh my God, socialism! The government's going to be paying, they're going to be taking money out of my pocket to pay this asshole. Fuck him. i got to do it myself. Well, what happens if you're the asshole who needs help? Well, I need help more than this other asshole. People keep forgetting what communism and socialism meant at this point over here. They keep going back to Joe McCarthyism. 
Communism and socialism depends upon, I know, the power of the worker being equal at this point over here, but not equal because we still have a group of millions ruling over their ass. Karl Marx didn't probably see that, but if he did, he was also an asshole. He didn't like democracy. He didn't like um, autocracy. He wanted the power to the workers. problem is, when you have power to the workers and you need consensus, is everybody in the workers supposed to be agreeing? Because that's going to be a hell of a thing. So there has to be a group overseeing these assholes, which means consent from the masses to the group of people who are supposed to be, everybody's supposed to be equal at this point over here, but they're not because now they're elitisms. People don't catch this, do they? McCarthy was afraid of something similar to happening in the United States where our democracy will be under constant attack, our, our way of life gone forever. Well, I hate to tell you something, but it has been stretched, it has been play doh it has been reamed left and right to where we're still going to have to be doing damage control for the next century in order before we start feeling comfortable with ourselves, with our own democracy and our own way of government because we just tortured the living crap out of it during the past four years or longer than that. Well, we've allowed hate and division and derision going on left and, left and right. We have allowed all this shit to happen. In fact, we allow democracy to be influenced to the max at this point over here. Now, I know what you're going to be saying about democracy. We had the special interest groups coming out. We had the special interest groups always trying to influence votes. Aristotle saw this. Aristotle knew this. He, he wrote books about the damn thing. People... Don't want to read something that heavy, that complicated, that convoluted. They want to boil down to a simple tea. They don't want a damn soup. They don't want a rich mixture that might in, in, in nourish, uh, encourage them and nourish them. No, they want a damn little simple broth that might do something or may not do something for them. If you want to put it in food terms. Aristotle is trying to tell us that democracy is one of the most easiest, influenced, and corruptible governments out there, but the damn thing works because you're dealing with the power of the people at this point. And without the power of the people, you ain't got a government. You, ain't got, you haven't got rules, you haven't got control, you haven't got shit. You just got a group of people trying to decide what the hell they want. Of course, they're going to be doing mob role at this point over here, but it's in, then again, it's still one person, one role, and everybody else is going to be going like uh, their own mini warlord, anarchy. But we can have a strong, authoritative government by having one ring rules them all. Like the Lord of the Rings at this point over here. Have your fiefdoms. Have your kingdoms warring against each other for more land and stuff. We can go back to that times if we want to. Scrap the damn Constitution left and right. American people ain't going to go for that shit either. So we got the system that we've developed a long time ago. We developed three chambers. We developed the executive branch, we still the traditional, and the legislative. Short and sweet. White House carries out the actions. Congress controls the purse and makes the laws. Judicial interprets the laws, but also sometimes can make new laws. That's how we were created. Our country. Upon careful study about every different forms of government, our founding fathers created this. It's imperfect, but the damn thing works. We have a constitution, we throw amendments in there to make corrections left and right, and the machine still works. Why gum it up? Why gum it up? Because we want money, we want power, we want ego, we want vanity, we want it all, but we're going to have semblance of it. Then start looking at other countries who did the same damn shit and collapsed their own damn, their own damn governments. You can Google that too. We have a country that theoretically was supposed to be under democratic law and rule, but they weren't because they allowed the power elite to have so much crap and wealth and the lower people got pissed off about it, not to mention the economy collapsed because of the infrastructure they were depending upon mostly. Their uh, dependency on oil exports, the market collapsed on them, and there goes their economy. Imagine that happened to the United States if we actually depended upon oil. But that's why, throughout the decades, we kept trying to develop new technologies to be dependent upon 
for our own energy needs and our own economy needs. And without those damn trade deals working with everybody else, we're going to be ending up like Venezuela. A collapsed, screwed up government at this point over here is going to be voting in another interim president, and then you're going to have a civil war. Well, let's see, did we have a civil war? Yes, we did. Back in 1860. Remember it, but we haven't read the whole damn thing about it because it was too damn conv convoluted, complicated, and scary as hell. I'll tell you something. Ken Burns and the series he did on PBS a few decades back. See if they still have it out there in PBS stores. Buy it, rent it. Look at all the damn ten-part series of the Civil War, or maybe longer than that. But now I'll give you a clear-cut picture of what the Civil War was all about. Boiling it down, they say North versus South. They say Democrats versus Republicans. Well, I hate to tell you that, but our Democrats and Republicans were a hell of a lot different back then compared to now. People keep forgetting that. People have gotten too damn lazy regarding their damn U.S. history. And we keep discovering more and more ugly things about U.S. history that makes our culture even that much more either richer or complicated and convoluted and more appreciative. Right now, all of that is being jeopardized and endangered because we have an orange gas bag that doesn't want to follow the rules and traditions and precedents that we've already set up throughout the centuries. We have laws, we have rules, we have regulations, we have something to keep the government warning. People don't like it, but that's the system for you. If you want a new system, make up your own damn system, go to a different place and create your own damn country. If you got a problem with the United States, talk to the people who are still running the damn thing. The same idiots and assholes you keep voting into office. The same thing about our system is we vote in our leaders who are supposed to be following us or actually doing what we tell them to do. And sometimes they have other ideas and agendas that may or may not be beneficial to the country. And if it is beneficial to the country, then we better get up with the, with the game plan. Otherwise, we're going, to be having, we're going to be having conflicts left and right with everybody. Let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. We already have conflicts with everybody now. Due to an administration screw-up or two, or many, and lies like crazy, and there's going to be interpretations over that, our country has so divided itself and created to kill each, other, kill each other. We're no longer united. We're divided states of America at this point over here. We're ripe for a major civil war. And if we can't follow one particular guy... In his suggestions, trying to get us back together again by not trying to kill each other, by trying to compromise, trying to find the common ground. If we can't find the common ground, then guess what, boys and girls? We no longer have the United States of America. We're back in civil war again. Part two. No, oh, I'm sorry. There was an official end to the civil war back in 1964. Well, that can always be rescinded because of our situation right now. So basically, we're continuing the same fucking war. Put it in plain language. Put it in blunt language that maybe you folks can understand what's going on. We are living in a, in a society, we're living in a world right now where everything else is so on damn uncertain. We've got a COVID virus kicking everybody's ass left and right. We're not even bothering to deal with the damn rules and regulations regarding this son of a bitch. There are rules in dealing with bacterial warfare at this point over here, and we're feeling miserable. Why do you think we have to keep wearing these fucking masks all the damn time? It's for our own protection? No, I'm sorry. It's for artistic nature. We want to be pretty. Give me a fucking break. We wear the damn masks so we don't breathe on each other. We wear the damn masks so we don't get breathed upon. We don't get this damn disease that's going to be using our bodies as a freaking beachhead and attacking everybody else that we like or don't like. Everybody else has got a weakened immune system, and therefore we become complicit and their death. Deal with that concept. I, for one, don't like to be considered a complicit in someone else's illness or death at this point over here. Simply put, I didn't do the necessary precautions to keep them alive. Nor am I willing to be a test guinea pig for these sons of bitches. 
entering my damn body and trying to kill me. I know what you're talking about, herd immunity. I'm like, give me a fucking break. You're going to kill people to save people? You're going to be doing a numbers game, you idiots? Are you going to be one of those people who are going to be self-sacrificing your own ugly ass to protect everybody else? Are you going to be that noble about it? Give me a break. Be realistic, you schmucks. We're living in a dangerous world at this point over here, and we have got to be using our heads. We have to be. Everybody's in for it. We've all got the ante in right now. It's time to belly up with all of our damn money. See who's got the better hand. The damn bug, or do we do? I'm sorry you folks can't understand this shit. I'm sorry you're brain dead and brainwashed about it. I'm sorry that you're following a damn a lunatic at this point over here who claims he knows more about the damn shit than anybody else does since he's smart. No, he's not. He's an ignorant son of a bitch. The bug is smarter than him. And it's... It's made of simple biologic components here that has to, that has to be uh, better programmed in its RNA than the orange gas bag that's still arguing about his own place in society right now. And his current place in society is going to be in jeopardy because the will of the people have voted and told him to get the fuck out. And then he's going to be arguing with the people left and right. He wants to stay in because he thinks he's going to help the people out when he's only helping him and his family out. Let's get real. Let's get real about it. A lot of people have put their faith and trust in the sycophants at this point over here, becoming sycophants yourself. They put themselves in Dracula. And they became mini Draculas, blood sucking vampires. Can't stand the daylight of truth. You can only deal with the nighttime of lies and conspiracy actions. Oh, please, God bless. QAnon's a bunch of bu a bunch of numb nuts at this point over here. But I'll tell you something. Sometimes the liberals don't know their ass from a hot rock. Okay? Sometimes liberals don't know their ass from a hot rock. But they need corrections every so often. They need to understand what they can and can't do at this point over here. And conservatism have got to be letting people... Decide for themselves. And not do this us versus them, this strong mentality. Give me a fucking break. You're not Cro Magnum people anymore. This is not the Dark Ages. This is the 21st fucking century. Get on with it. Don't do this damn machoism with the damn guns and shit like that. That's going to intimidate people. That's going to protect you from a damn bug. That's going to protect you from an economic collapse at this point over here? Are you going to be the ones that are going to be telling people at this point what to do and what not to do? And therefore, circumnavigating the democratic process one way or another? Are you going to be the next Johnny Rebs and say that the whole government is against you at this point over here? Is that what you're trying to do? And you damn conspiracy theories over there. Pizza Gate, what the fuck was that bullshit? Come off it. You guys are all fucking head game and nut jobs. You guys ought to be all fiction writers. You gotta be spreading your bullshit. Put it in a damn book and publish a damn thing. Let people read the damn thing. Put it under fiction writing. That's all you are doing is fiction writing. Without basis in fact. Without basis in actual science. Without basis in hard proof. You ain't got shit. Now, you're probably going to be looking at me as the world's number one enemy. Good. Because I always put this damn disclaimer in a lot of my videos at this point, and you can check every one of them. I'm not a fucking guru. I'm an observationalist of everything. But I've been going to a lot of, oh, my God, liberal colleges and learned things. And a 54-year-old is still studying and, and understanding his world. And all of my videos are telling people of how I got into the situations I am. All you got to do is listen. All you got to do is learn. If you can't do that, God, there's no help for you anywhere, is there? Because if you can't be open-minded enough to understand what the hell you're going to be putting yourself into, 
Just be like the three monkeys all the fucking time. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Just walk around through life like that, bumping yourself into things left and right. And if there's a train coming, you won't hear it because you'll be splat left and right. And if you happen to see and hear things, but your, your tongue's already cut off, so much for listening from you. You blow your damn went waving your antics. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't see it and you can't hear it. You're just like the three monkeys embodied. Well, I'm not going to say watch out for that train of reality when it hits and splats you. Because at this point, you guys are the three monkeys incarnate. How's that for an insult? Growing up as a kid, I was observant in a hell of a lot of things that I didn't understand. I didn't understand politics. I didn't understand the reasons why the government officials were doing one thing or another. I didn't understand why Richard Nixon was getting impeached and why members of his cabinet were also involved in the Watergate scandal of setting up the, the Democratic Party in order to keep a Republican asshole in office. And he had power mad ideas going on in his head. Sounds familiar of today, doesn't it? I did realize that one particular president would be affecting two countries' futures that eventually would probably be affecting or resonating throughout the Middle East and throughout the world's history. It didn't dawn on me that we actually were under a nuclear age where our lives could be exterminated under a nuclear blast of any sort from any direction. Except I know how to fear all that shit. Didn't realize about the gas prices being dependent upon oil revenues and market shares and how one country, if they can undervalue the damn oil, can change the market system for everybody involved with the oil and then affects everybody else's. It didn't occur to me that one little incident can make a hell of a repercussion by studying a Japanese end garden, you can understand cause and effect and the consequences of the effects from the cause. Or if you happen to dump a stone in the water, how come the ripples are still going forward? It didn't dawn on me that carbon monoxide was going to be killing my ass, putting me into an asthmatic state as an adult decades later. It didn't occur to me that there was a certain serial rapist or murderer out there in the San Fernando Valley, and actually in the city of Los Angeles as well, that caused a hell of a lot of fear and panic until somebody actually saw the son of a bitch and kicked his ass, kept him bloodied and bruised for the cops to put this son of a bitch away. But it changed our own outlook on what security is supposed to be like. It didn't dawn on me that there were civil rights issues happening well before I was born and still affecting well after I'm still living. When I see one guy get pulled over, drunk as hell, after a chase from a whole line of cops, and they come over and they get this one guy beaten nearly to a damn pulp and almost deaf, caught on video, because one guy decided to test out his video camera. And it changed a hell of a lot of lives and it raised our, our viewpoint of what we look at each other like. It didn't dawn on me geologic pressures underneath the earth have a way of doing a consequence on everybody and on everything around you. And multiple earthquakes at different times in your life can install a nice healthy sort of fear regarding the earth movement but also fascination for didn't dawn on me about all these damn things. Uh, marine traffic can affect a hell of a lot of people. Uh, economics. Or how about a deadly disease can actually wreck an entire world's economy left and right. And damn near bring us to the brink of insanity at this point. If we're doing it right now as it is. See, there was a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know anything about college. Even though I get a little educated about how the college system works, 
and having the maturity level to understand a damn thing. And even after two and a half years getting out of high school and struggling through college, that uh, college was not ready for me and I wasn't ready for it. 30 years of working at different jobs left and right, kicking my ass for not having a, the proverbial college degree, and I was an observer of anything and everything around me. I guess in that situation, I could have counted myself lucky at that point. Because there was a lot of college graduates, middle managers, getting their asses kicked left and right in different job losses. Different recessions we kept coming up on. Yeah, I observed a hell of a lot. And there was a hell of a lot more to be observed, especially when I was away from my own damn viewpoints. And the media was only one of those damn things. I had to talk to people. I had to listen to what was going on around me. In my head, it was taking a hell of a lot of mental notes, even though I may, have, may not have been aware of what was going on. History was being played around me. How about the space race at this point over here? Thought I was supposed to be the most scientific advancement mankind could ever do, and it was all a political head game. Just so we'd get, the right, we'd get there before the Russians in the, on the moon, so we can wag our asses at them with the American flag and say, guess what we did? We beat you. <laughs> we got our first American station up there but three crews, and used Apollo equipment. Russia compiled, compiled their own damn space station. They had the damn thing up there for years, and then they put up another station. Then finally joined forces with several countries, including the United States, to get the International Space Station going on. During that time, they wanted to still compete with America, but when the collapse of the Soviet Union kicked in, they lost their space race. They flew up one particular shuttle, their own version, stolen from us. They made more modifications so they can claim it was their own idea, but they stole it from us. But our system maintained for 30 years, got too damn expensive, so we had to shut the whole damn program down. In fact, have everybody, millions of jobs, millions of people, out of work. Scrambling for other jobs at different companies left and right, or forming their own damn companies left and right. Oh, yeah. Try that one. Try going into a town that was being developed in the desert for so many years, for so many decades. You hardly ever knew anything about it. Me, I never heard about it in, in Old Valley. Vaguely about it growing up as a kid. I had friends growing up out there or also moved back out there to live because rent was a hell of a lot cheaper, but the commute sucked. Coming back to Los Angeles. So they never bother going back to Los Angeles, bother to stay out here in Antelope Valley. And then seeing that there was industry out here called aerospace, which affected a hell of a lot of jobs, lives, and history. History being still made. Our town grew up around an airbase. Originally a collection of trailer homes but then started developing track homes and development housing uh, projects for base personnel to live on outside the base. And thus Roseman was born. Right out of necessity, because of an air base, needed the land and the housing to support people. And then there has to be support in the town for the base and anybody else traveling to and from. How's that grab you? A uh, movie industry was just a simple movie camera that created the industry empires that were still enslaved to, shall we say. Now we have to shell out money to pay for their interpretations of what their theoretical life versions are. Their fantasy levels. It's hard as hell to deal with them, isn't it? So you see, I've been trying to be an observer of human, humankind ever since the day I was born. I'm 
observing how medical science has increased knowledge more ways than one. How it saves lives and also at the same time tortures your ass. Don't tell me that I don't know diddly shit. I've lived through too much diddly shit. I've lived through much. Not as much as some people we keep venerating left and right have got a hell of a lot more life lived in them. And they lived and they shared it with us. And now we're no longer sharing the benefits of their experiences because they have already departed. People we have grown up to venerate and celebrate. I'm not talking about our own relatives, I'm not talking about our own family members or friends that we grew up with. I'm talking about celebrities that we watched on television as they changed, as they grew, and as they fought with whatever debilitating situations they ran into until their bodies were no longer capable of the fight and they decided that was it, or something decided for them. Now we're in a political situation over here, or an ongoing constant political situation over here, which a change of power is going to occur and being delayed because one side is totally afraid. They have expressed their fear factor in many ways to where sycophants are wanting to glom onto them so much they are worse than leeches. Worse than vampires. They depend upon their, their chief sycophant. Their chief leech. They depend upon them so damn much for their own existence in life. Their own purpose in life. That they're willing to fight other people left and right to keep it. They're willing to divide a country and still call it quote-unquote democracy. Their way, their rule, that's democracy for them. And they've forgotten everything else they've learned in school. Unless they weren't studying in school and just totally been total dropouts left and right. But even some of those dropouts would have been more intelligent than these idiots. So maybe they would have had a little bit more common sense, a little bit more horse sense. Ah, but you're talking about that they have the drug users and the drug abusers. And, well, let's say you people are going for marijuana all the damn time, cannabis, and you keep giving that safe. And let's see, every time I kept going into recovery halls, people were using cannabis and then coming up as fucked up as hell. Tell me something I don't know. A little glass of wine, a, lot, a little glass of alcohol is not going to kill you. Tell that to the people who have already got tombstones and death certificates assigned to them. Or how about not listening to doctors regarding your damn health and you're looking at your own mortality every day in the mirror, realizing that you've already gambled and lost without even realizing, without even acknowledging it. Well, guess what, boys and girls? Welcome to real life. You think I'm depressing and boring right now? Wait until it gets even worse down the road. So I just wanted to drop that little bombshell on you after you survived listening to this damn diatribe here. You're probably going to be screaming and yelling your head off saying, who the fuck is this asshole here? What the hell does he know? A lot more than you do. A lot more than you do. I don't have any letters afterward my name. I don't have any glorified certificates, which I'm still working on just one basic one. Just to prove to myself that I can actually survive through college even at my own age. If I couldn't do it as a damn kid, I wasn't about to give up on the damn dream since I kicked myself for over 30 fucking years. And I decided a long time ago I wasn't going to disappoint my mother or my brother or myself because I wasted college and I wanted to do this for myself. And I still want to publish my own damn fiction writing out there. And maybe bore the crap out of the whole damn world. I hope so. Maybe I won't get one damn reader. Except for one person. Me. 
I mean, that's a point of writing. But right now, this whole damn diatribe is to get you pissed off enough to understand the world is bigger than you. History is a hell of a lot larger than you. But history is not history without you in history. Life doesn't mean a damn thing unless you're in it and trying to live it and then trying to explain all your observations to other people so they can try learning from it and understanding what the hell you've been through, let alone what this asshole's been through, let alone anybody else for that matter. Understand what's going on around you. Understand the importance of a lot of things. Understand the awe that's happening at this point. You're alive, you're breathing. You're seeing life happening around you. You're seeing the will of man being contested against each other in words, in deeds, in writing. You're seeing man try and survive one way or another. And you're seeing a lot of things happening that you can't explain. Let's just hope you keep the air of wonder going on around you. Because once you're being a closed off person, you're going to be depending upon everybody else just like a fucking leech. Well then, guess what? Look at yourself in the mirror, leech. Look at yourself in the mirror. How about that one?